Hey everybody, my name is Tom Tullis. This is the Tomb of 3D Printed Horrors. And today I've got a brand new uh, technique for painting dungeon tiles to show you. This is a very fast technique, uh, looks really good, and I am currently using it to paint uh, my entire Lost Dungeons collection. Uh, Lost Dungeons, for those of you that don't know, is our brand new dungeon line. Uh, the starter set has over 200 models in it. It's normally $50, but in this video, in the description, I've got a discount link uh, for 80% off, so you get it for only $9.99. So uh, if you want to pick that up, that discount link is a great way to go and get it for 80% off. So this new method of painting, um, it just has a few steps. It's using off-the-shelf colors. Uh, there's only one that you're going to custom mix, and that's just a 50-50 mix of a brown and a gray. Uh, but it comes out looking really good, and it's really fast to do when you're batching a lot of these models. Okay, to get started here, I've already uh, primered this model with uh, Rust-Oleum Flat Gray Primer. Uh, I also use Krylon a lot. It doesn't really matter, but the, those type primers really stick well to the PLA, and then the acrylics that you're going to apply stick well to those primers. So I've gone ahead, and I have primered this piece with the Flat Gray, and then I've already base coated it with the Apple Barrel Pewter Gray. Uh, and I buy this in these giant bottles because I use it so much. This is such a great, it's got, it's a cool gray. It has just a slight, slight green tint to it, but it's fantastic for dungeons and for uh, caverns and stuff. So this has already been base coated with it. The other colors you're going to use are Folk Art Prairie Sage. Um, folk art mushroom and then folk art steel gray and those three are going to make up the colors for a lot of the stonework on this and such and then finally uh, i'm using apple barrel melted chocolate but any medium brown will work when we get to that stage it does not have to be this particular one so i'm just going to start picking out uh, random stones with the folk art prairie sage here uh, and Prairie Sage, it's a gray-green color. It's really nice uh, for stonework, and I like it a lot, and I use it on a lot of my models. But I'm just going to go through here, and I'm going to fast-forward this. I'm going to start out with Prairie Sage, and then I'm going to start uh, applying Mushroom to some of the stones, and then finally the Steel Gray. And we're just going to fast-forward through this here. And don't sweat how many stones you feel you have to do at this stage. Um, do as few or as many as you want. It really doesn't matter. Whatever looks good to you will be fine. Uh, the upcoming three stages, the sponge, the dry brush, and then the final wash, uh, even if just a couple of these stones are picked out, it's still going to come out looking really great. Okay, so that's done. We're going to set it aside to fully dry before we proceed to the next step. All right, for this next step, you're going to need a paper towel and an old sponge. Uh, we're going to be sponging on the prairie sage all over the piece. And I'm just dabbing this on, just hitting the kind of the high points. It's really not uh, that critical what you're doing here. Um, this step is primarily to kind of tie all the stonework in so the variation in colors isn't that stark. And when the prairie sage goes on wet, it looks a lot lighter than what it's going to dry as. Uh, so you might think you're putting too much on and you're really not. It'll take a couple of these for you to kind of get a feel for how much you want. Uh, as always, if you're not sure, put a little bit on, let it dry, and then you can always add more. It's far easier to add more than try to repaint the whole thing from scratch. So I'm just doing it until it kind of looks right, kind of blending those other colors in. And uh, I think that's going to be about good right there. Everything's nice. I can still see a variation in color, but uh, it's not that stark and that, you know, that, that huge of a difference that just looks odd. Okay, so the next step, we're going to take the Folk Art Steel Gray, and this is going to be a dry brush application. So I'm going to focus on hitting the edges of the stonework, the corners, uh, but I am going to get it over the top surfaces too. And this is just kind of a light dry brush. Uh, not, nothing really, really uh, stark or heavy. But I'm just wanting to pick out those edges. 
And then once that's done, I'm going to set that aside to dry. It won't take long, it won't take any more than a few minutes. And then there's only one more uh, step to go here. And in this step, we're going to take uh, the pewter gray and the melted chocolate. And again, any medium brown will work. You don't have to use melted chocolate. Where the other colors are kind of uh, selected, I selected them because they're exactly what I wanted. The melted chocolate is just what I had on hand. So 50-50 mix of melted chocolate and pewter gray. Mix that up uh, with your brush handle. And then we're going to add a lot of water to this. Get it really, really soupy. And apply that wash all over the model. And you want to get it everywhere. Just sopping wet with this. And then it's going to look terrible. I know that. Um, just go ahead and get it just really wet. You want it soaking into every possible crevice you can. Uh, get it on there. And then we're going to wipe it off with a paper towel. And the reason for that is I don't want it really affecting the colors of the stones per se. I just want it getting in those crevices uh, and helping pick out that stonework there on the uh, tile where uh, one of the stones is crumbled up. Um, but shake off the excess and then go in with a paper towel and just wipe it off. Uh, it will stain the... Uh, uh, stonework really nicely and it will sit in between the stones and help uh, delineate those um, but you just just wipe it off all of the top surfaces and set it aside to dry then and here's what the finished product looks like um, it looks really good uh, I did do one more thing I put another drop of the brown wash on that uh, tile floor uh, where that broken up uh, stone is just to make it a little bit darker I just put one extra drop in and then let it dry uh, but aside from that there it is it's a really fast easy technique uh, the stonework isn't really stark like you see in a lot of other painting techniques where uh, they stand out and I think it looks really good for as fast as this goes please click that like and subscribe button that really helps me out with the YouTube algorithm and I'll have another video for you all very soon